debate. Good Arab Shabbos, everybody. This is going to be, unfortunately, a political video. I should make some more Torah videos. I had a great uh, request to make some videos on Hasidus, which mentioned particular Sfarim, which I would like to do. If we can get some uh, sponsorships going, I think we'll. Uh, it, it could be a good, uh, a good uh, arrangement there. But anyway, and I, I don't usually ask for money, but I see it's a, a company that was asking for it, so they, they, it was Evazanana. Maybe, you know, they could, I don't know how many uh, viewers I have in Tennessee, but it seems like this is a company from Tennessee, but it's a very hamish sounding name, and uh, maybe we could, we could do something with that. <clears throat> and I don't know if their work extends beyond their local area either. But in any event, I wanted to talk about this issue of uh, the, uh, what do they call it? the executive orders that Mr. Biden put in concerning uh, transgenderism. And I, I saw something on Twitter that I retweeted from a Catholic uh, television station, Internal World uh, Network, uh, television network, right? EWTN or EWN, Internal Word Network. I don't remember the, the name of the channel. It's, uh, I should have remembered. I think it's EWTN. Anyway. And it was a news report, and it was discussing, they had an author on, it wasn't a religious show, it was a, it was a news uh, comment. And they were discussing this question about, you know, there are two big issues here. Uh, bathroom and locker room issues. And also... Um, the uh, sports issues, which is, I guess, connected to the locker room issues, but the sporting competition issues, where uh, anybody who could identify with with either gender could have the choice to um, go with their identified genders bathrooms, locker rooms, and sporting teams that are segregated by gender. And, you know, th these are questions about, and, and, and so this, these are the questions that really are the most controversial parts. And I think the reason why I want to bring it out is because the only reason I want to bring out is because we have to discuss about what is not controversial with these issues. Meaning, uh, if, uh, you know, when it comes to hiring somebody based on their, um, based on certain identities, and I'm not getting into the question whether it's a choice or not a choice or this or that. The fact of the identity. And, uh, you know, if it's an actual issue of discrimination, obviously, you know, people should not be discriminated against solely based on, on these issues. You know, if somebody is qualified for a job, as much as one might have different views about these different issues, which we certainly do in our religious worlds, different religious worlds have different views on these issues, as different parts of the secular world have different views on these issues. They're not, it's not cut and dry. You know, all of a sudden this became an orthodoxy on the left, and the fact of the matter is there, there are scholars that would consider themselves to be liberal, and perhaps even on the left, and, and uh, secularists, even atheists, who might still uh, might disagree with a lot of these issues 
as they're being presented, um, and not you know accept the the standard orthodoxy that the left has imposed upon us with, when it comes to these issues. And, and, and it's even within their own ranks where there should be questions, meaning why, you know, why are we, you know, defeating the feminist movement in favor of the transgender movement, right? Things like that. Um, within the, the leftist identity politics world. Uh, and again, so I, I, I've said often that the issues on the right of the American right, which aren't like, you know, what the Europeans would call the right. The European right is really just another version of the American left and European left. Um, whereas the American right is about, you know, this rugged individualism, which would go down to including things that are um, non-conformance, I'll say. You know, I guess that's a term that we would use. Meaning, look at this fellow who got arrested in the, you know, because of his uh, vandalism and so forth in, in the in the Capitol building, uh, who calls himself uh, Q Shaman and, and uh, Jacob Angeli, and he's a, his real name is Jacob Chinevsky, I think. And I found his website, which is quite extensive. And it's certainly not conformist to anything. But I think it is a realization of the rugged, rugged individualism of America. This is a man who kind of plays both sides of the aisle. He's a... He supported... It appears he supported President Trump and even the QAnon movement but also fighting against climate change, um, appeared at, at rallies on both sides in a positive way, meaning things that would be traditionally and conformistly seen to be either on the left or the right, this man embraced both. Um, and I think that is an example as much as I'm upset about uh, this vandalism and stuff in the uh, in the Capitol, because everybody knew that that would just give the Democrats what they wanted, it really, and that's why they let it happen, and that's why they sent a lot of their own crisis actors into to instigate a lot of these things. But that nonconformist aspect is, is very American conservative. And you know, this is where the questions though they come in. So we often say that, you know, your rights extend as far as the other person's knows, you know. Meaning yes, but, you know, it's appropriate in society to give equal rights to everyone, including people who are part of these transgender communities and so forth, who identify with these communities. And they should have all the same rights as everyone else, as long as they don't infringe on anybody else's rights. But if it means that, uh, you know, as far as the sporting world, which I think doesn't really matter that much to me, I don't care about sports, uh, but if it means that female athletes are being disenfranchised, you know, it's a question if that's a a, um, a violation of the rights of the biologically female uh, athletes. But then, you know, the bigger issue, obviously, is the... You know the bathrooms and the and the locker rooms. So it's interesting because my wife generally says the bathrooms, all right, 
what the, in Europe they have single gender bathrooms. Why do we need to have men's rooms and women's rooms? Obviously, there are obvious reasons. You know, the potential for victimization that exists. Um, so then, you know, I guess the the answer would be to have uh, you know single bathrooms. You know, what just was one toilet, and that's it. And not to have the the congregant bathrooms that exist, you know, uh, in, in most public arenas. So, you know, that's definitely, uh, and, you know, the issue, you know, perhaps, you know, there's a, another possibility is to have, you know, maybe three different bathrooms. So again, uh, people might see it as, uh, you know, uh, to have, you know, one bathroom that is unisex, which some places have that as well, especially family restrooms or, you know, they'll, they'll have one extra restroom that's just a single stall, a single toilet, and that's it. Uh, but not everybody has the funds to accomplish that. And so, again, th these are the questions about both sides, uh, two sides that, you know, one is violating the rights of the other. And I understand the other side, why someone who presents themselves uh, and dresses female would be uncomfortable in the male bathroom as well. And I understand why someone who is female would be uncomfortable with a biological male in their bathroom. It works, you know, you have both sides. So these are part of the issues uh, that we have to deal with there. Um, But then we go a little bit, you know, and then and then obviously in the the locker rooms, that's a whole nother issue. Uh, my understanding is that the the culture of a female locker room is a lot more modest than the culture of a male locker room. Uh, but again, it's uh, obviously there's going to be issues there as well. So. You know, and again, I'm not really even offering any solutions to the more controversial issues, but really making it clear that I don't think anybody is saying that someone solely, let's say, solely for the purpose of this issue, um, would say that people should be, rec uh, you know, should be discriminated against. Uh, if they're doing a good job, and, and and also it's not a distraction to the job, you know, the question of, uh, there was a, uh, an issue about the, about a funeral home, I believe, um, and that that could be an impact, that could impede on the actual job, that would, could be a problem, um, and I can, again, hear both sides, you know, that the, the, you know, people will feel that they're not being uh, served properly by the funeral home on this account. Uh, because, it, again, it's, but as far as, you know, I, I know, at my work, I know we have one individual um, who appears to be a, a, someone who's biologically male and, and presents himself in the female gender. Um, and I believe this person is a nurse and as long as this person is able to do their job which really to use the plural is not correct but it's uh, I, I know that's what's come into the modern parlance All right, I hear, I hear. So as long you know they're doing their job, it's not distracting from their job. 
it's, I don't, I, you know, I don't think anybody should discriminate based on that. Again, I'm not talking about issues in religious belief and so forth. That's, you know, certainly in our religion, uh, and it's what the Bible says, a man is not allowed to wear women's clothes and a woman's not allowed to wear man's clothes. So yes, it's it's against our religion. All right, but a lot of things are against our religion. You know, I'm not going to say that the state should be imposing my religious views uh, on the on, on, in the in the secular realm. You know, although I do believe that uh, religious institutions and so forth should have the right to have their own rules. You know, these are the places where you know, you have conflicting rights, and and that's where you have to find the balance. And but where there's no conflict, then there's really no issue. You know, again, your rights extend to the next person's nose. You know, and you know to to demand that every store and every place you know install, let's say, another bathroom or make all the bathrooms. Uh, unisex and this or that or whatever it is it's it also it infringes on other people's rights as well because um, not everyone can afford it there's a lot of issues there although I understand that that's not you know the, the fact they can't afford it it's not generally viewed as uh, as a, a good enough excuse but you know, there's no expectation, for example, that I go into any restaurant and demand that they make me a kosher meal. You know, and and uh, and, and that I'm saying, and, and that I would be saying that if you don't give me a kosher meal, you're discriminating against me. No, that's ridiculous. In the same way as the other uh, the other way, for if for someone to step into the kosher restaurant and demand a, a ham sandwich. You can't do that, and it's not discriminating, and and that's been my argument with these cases, with the with the wedding cakes and stuff like that. That you know, to go into a Christian bakery and demand a wedding cake that has uh, two room toppers on it, um, it's the equivalent of going into a kosher restaurant and demanding. Um, you know, a, a ham sandwich, but to, but on the other hand, if the Christian bakery says we don't serve your kind around here, well, that's discrimination. So, you know, for them to say I'm happy to make a cake, to sell you this cake that I have, and if you want to go buy, or, or you know, another uh, groom topper and take off the bride topper and put on the groom, or whatever that is. You want to do that and take my cake that I made and, and serve it there? Well, that's none of my business. But you can't make me design the cake, etc. You know, and and the same thing if if uh, you know a kosher restaurant is saying, oh no, you can't eat here because you're not Jewish, or or a halal restaurant says you can't eat here because you're not Muslim. Yeah, that would be discriminatory. But it's not discriminatory to say, yeah, you can eat here, but we're not serving you ham, we're not serving you a cheeseburger. Um, so, you know, these are where these things have to be viewed. And so, too, yes, in our religion, we're not allowed to, not allowed to mutilate the body, not, uh, you, know, uh, 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 you know, if it's not medically necessary and it's not religiously mandated. Um, you know, just to, you're not allowed. We're not allowed to get tattoos. You're not, you know, things like that. Um, and that's our religion. Am I going to say tattoos should be uh, against the law? No. You know, I, I, that's not my belief. You know, so so for me to, you know, say that there should be some kind of laws against transgenderism. It would be the same as me saying that, that tattoo parlors should be shut down. And incidentally, according to most opinions, you know, the prohibition of, of uh, uh, men and women wearing uh, different, the other gender's clothing 
would seem to not be under the, the rubric of the seven laws of Noah, although some uh, some commentators would say that it is that it is a a law that applies um, to the general public as well, either under the rubric of of sexual immorality or of idolatry. Um, so it's a uh, you know it, it's a question certainly, but it's not generally understood that way. Um, So that's basically my message here is that, you know, it, it, it is a problem. You know, we're not looking to take away actual rights that are not problematic. Nobody wants to say that, you know, this person who is biologically male and identifies as female who works at the same place where I work as a nurse shouldn't have their job. I certainly wouldn't say that. Um, and I always treat such a person with respect and use their preferred pronouns, you know, just like the same way I work in a, with mentally ill people. And I, if someone insists that their name is, is Thomas Jefferson or George Washington or Abraham Lincoln, I'll refer to them as that. I, I don't want to insult somebody or offend somebody. You know, we treat people with, with dignity and respect. Um, you know, if someone wants to be called a doctor or professor, I call them that also, you know. It, 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 we have a saying in the, I believe it comes from the Sefer Hasidim, it's, uh, a person's will is his honor. Meaning you want to show honor to someone, you treat them the way they want to be treated. You know, it's, uh, I was told that, you know, there's the golden rule and there's the platinum rule. Platinum is more expensive than gold, right? And everyone knows the golden rule is treat others how you want to be treated. But the platinum rule is treat others how they want to be treated. And, and so we try our best to do that. But it's not always feasible to treat others the way they want to be treated if it's going to impinge on someone else. Your, you know, my rights extend until your nose. I can't, you know, I cannot impede on your rights with my rights. We got, you know, there has to be a balance. And so that may be, and, you know, it's the same thing, you know, uh, you know, I, I, I'll be the first to say, you know, and I'm a Jewish person. And, you know, I don't think, you know, in the public schools, you know, this was an issue when I was a kid, you know, do you have to have a Hanukkah song at every holiday concert just because there's one Jewish kid in the class? No, you don't. And it's ridiculous to expect that. And really, if you're Jewish, you belong in yeshiva. Uh, but the thing is, I don't believe in public schooling at all anyway, and I think that... Uh, public school system is extremely corrupt and evil and it's communism and I and I oppose it um, you know all these things people say about uh, your religious institutions and, and abuse and this, it's much much worse than the public schools you know and and we're being forced to pay for it so it's a uh, You know, and, and, and generally a lot of these claims uh, are just anti-religious bigots just trying to, uh, to make religion look bad. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's, that's the situation. Thank you for watching. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe. Comment. We'll see you later.